Hi and welcome to Yoga Dharma TV. My name's Fran and today we'll be looking at shoulder stand with my wonderful student George again. Shoulder stand should not be practiced by anybody that has any injuries uh, in their neck or their back, uh, high blood pressure, uh, thyroid problems, maybe, <laughs> okay? But the most important thing is that you're not practicing without a teacher, okay? So make sure you have a teacher before you start practicing shoulder stand. George is a particular fan of shoulder stand, so he makes it look rather easy. Please make sure with your teacher that you follow many steps and maybe use the steps that I advise to use tonight. These steps help you use your abdomen, uh, helps you use your pelvic floor, and they also help to ensure that you're not resting on the seventh vertebrae, but are working in the shoulder areas. Try to also make sure that it's at least uh, three hours since you've eaten, and whilst you're in the posture that you do not cough, you do not move your neck, and you keep your gaze steady. So after many weeks of preparation, George is now prepared to practice his shoulder stand. So make sure you have the permission of your teacher before you practice any kind of shoulder stand, okay? So we're going to start by really working the abdominals. So I'm going to ask George to bring his arms alongside his body and straighten his legs. And then bend his knees and breathe in and bring both knees into his chest. So bending his knees and bringing his knees into his chest. He's going to press his hands into the floor and press his shoulders into the floor and make sure the back of his head is pressed into the floor. When he's ready, he's going to breathe in, activate the pelvic floor and start to lift the hips away from the floor, keeping the knees tight into his chest, gently rolling up and gently coming down. Gently easing his way up and gently coming down. So we'll try this a number of times. And when you and your teacher feel confident that you're ready to come up, you're going to breathe in and draw your knees into your chest and start to draw your way up into half shoulder stand. So he's going to take his legs back behind him and this time he's going to straighten the legs, come into half shoulder stand and if he wishes, he's going to take his hands back onto his shins for Viparati Karani Mudra. This way, he's protected from working into the seventh vertebrae. It strengthens the core and it calms down the system. So this is a very good posture for helping you sleep at night. And now he's going to exhale, release his body out of that. So starting to bend the knees and slowly work his way down, pressing the hands into the floor, pressing the shoulders into the floor and easing the back of the head into the floor. So again, after maybe a few weeks of work in this, again, you have to have this discussion with your teacher. You may be ready to start to practice full shoulder stand. So we want to be making sure that we're completely on the top of our shoulders. It is called shoulder stand and not neck stand. Okay, we want to make sure our chin's tucked in and we're still going to come up in that same slow, controlled manner. So breathing in, drawing your knees into your chest, please, George. And slowly rolling your way up. Lifting the bottom high through half shoulder stand and then all the way up into full shoulder stand. So he's placing his hands on his back, pressing the hands into his back as high up as he can take his hands and drawing his elbows in towards one another. Just keeping his abdomen strong. And then 
The toes, when we first practice, tend to drift over the top of the head. In fact, mine always do. <laughs> and you can start to bring now, George, your toes slightly more towards your fingertips. So a little bit further away from your nose, straightening yourself up. Fantastic. So this is a very, very well-practiced uh, student we have here. But don't worry if your legs are a little bit over your nose, it just takes time. And to come out of that now, George is going to release the hands, start to bend the knees and roll his way out. So George, after practicing this maybe for many months, many years even, he's going to start to work in a little bit more of a solid fashion. So this time, without bending his knees, he's going to come up in his usual fashion with straight legs. This, as I say, takes many years of practice. So don't be practicing this without the permission of your teacher. So he's going to breathe in and start to roll his way up with nice straight legs. Much self-control there, rolling his way up onto his shoulders. So now George is going to start to practice plough position. So he's going to bring his toes over his head now, hinging from his hips, trying to keep his back absolutely straight, tailbone working towards his elbows, fantastic. That's absolutely perfect, George. Lowering down millimetre by millimetre until his toes touch the earth. And again, as this is a very well-practiced student, he can move from plough into Karnapidasana, so dropping his knees around his ears. And he's squeezing the knees into his ears. This is called ear pressure pose. So it's to calm the system down. Make sure your jaw is relaxed. There's no swallowing at all. No clenching. And now he's going to straighten the legs back up into plough. and slowly returning using the in-breath back to full shoulder stand, using his abdominal strength. And then he could take his feet together and his knees apart into Baddha Konasana. Drawing the toes back up to the ceiling now. And so now George is going to release the hands and bring the hands alongside the hips for full shoulder stand. This is for only the most practiced of students, but he's completely on his shoulders now. And now he's going to exhale, release the hands down to his back and then release the hands down by his sides to slowly and carefully work his way back onto the floor. And he can counterpose that now with fish position. Again, only for those that are practicing with their teacher's permission, practicing fish, as it puts quite a lot of strain on the back and the neck. And easing your way out now, hugging your knees into your chest and giving yourself the biggest hug ever. So this is for the student that's already practicing the inversion, working their legs up against the wall. And they'd like to evolve towards shoulder stand. And the teacher feels quite happy for them to evolve towards shoulder stand. 
So George tonight is going to start to bend his knees and place his feet on the wall as though he's practicing squat. His feet are hip distance apart and he's starting to engage his abdomen and his pelvic floor. And he's already very well warmed up. On the next in-breath, he's going to start to lift his tailbone away from the floor and start to lift his hips. And then exhale, lower his hips down. Breathe in, repeat that again. Inhale, lifting. And exhale, lowering. Inhale, lifting again. Maybe this time he can lift a little higher, if your teacher feels you can. And then exhale, lower down. And inhale, lift up again. And exhale, lower down. So George seems to be practicing this beautifully, practicing with much awareness. So we're going to let him come all the way up. So breathing in, lifting all the way up. And if he wishes, he can take his hands behind his back. It's sometimes nice to keep the hands away from the back at first because it makes you work your core. But if you don't feel supported enough, you can bring your hands back towards your back. So taking the hands on the back now, George. So he's going to try and lengthen the hip flexors a little. Keep pressing his toes into the wall. Okay, so after practicing that for a few weeks, making sure his hips are nice and lifted. So draw your hips up a little further, George, towards the ceiling. He may feel ready to start practicing the full shoulder stand. At this stage, you really must ask the permission of a teacher. So even if you're in a class, don't allow yourself just to throw yourself up. Ask your teacher whether you're ready to bring both legs up. So raising your right leg towards the ceiling and then bringing your left leg in to join it. So anytime he can bring his feet back towards the wall, as you can see, and then he can bring his feet back up again into the full shoulder stand. So he's in complete control. He's pointing his toes and he's way up on his shoulders. Now at this point, his elbows are a little wide. After a few weeks, he may be able to draw his elbows in towards the center of his back a little bit more. The neck is relaxed. He's nice and easy on his shoulders, so there should be no weight on the seventh cervical of the spine. He's not swallowing or coughing, and he's certainly not moving his head around. He's absolutely still. Okay, so George is going to come down and complete this now. So he's going to bring whichever foot feels right into the wall, first of all, and then follow it with the opposite foot. And then slowly allow the hips to lower as he releases his hands. Lowering down vertebrae by vertebrae, keeping the abdomen strong, the pelvic floor lifted. And he just rests there for quite a moment or two. And then when he's ready to come out, he has draw his knees into his chest and roll out onto his side and ease his way back up to seated. Thank you for tuning in today on Yoga Dharma TV and thank you so much to George, he's such a superstar. Please make sure that you work carefully with your teacher in shoulder stand and don't forget to subscribe. See you soon.